In this video, we are going to see how you can set up Google Analytics 4 account on your Shopify store through Google Tag Manager. In the previous video, we looked at how you can do it through the sales channel that has been added by Google and YouTube, which is a simple one click solution. However, if the conversion tracking is not properly working for you and the desired rate is below, then you can migrate your integration from the native to the Google Tag Manager for a custom solution. In this video, we are going to see how you can set up Google Tag Manager on your Shopify store and how you can add Google analytics for properties through google tag manager in the store if you already have created ga4 and google analytics account you can start from this timestamp otherwise you can go to this video to create your google analytics and google tag manager accounts let's jump right into my computer to see where we are going to begin i already have a google tag manager account let's just head back to the admin section on google tag manager so we can get the tracking script that we're going to add in the head and the body section of the website under the admin on container settings you are going to find an option for install google tag manager container here you are going to find two tracking snippets one will be placed on the head section and one will be placed on the body section on your shopify store let's start by grabbing the head tracking code and go to the shopify store Click on online store and it will redirect you to the themes. If you are not already on the themes, click on the themes. It's always advisable to duplicate your theme before making any changes. However, we are not going to do this for the tutorial point of view. Let's click on edit code. We are going to locate the theme.liquid file, which is the main file of your website. This theme.liquid file is present across all the pages on your store. However, this does not give you access to the slash checkout route. This means that you cannot track two events that are add payment info and add shipping info. You can also not track begin checkout event. However, we do have a solution to track begin checkout event before the user is redirected from the cart page to the checkout page. Let's get back to the video where we are adding the Google Tag Manager tracking codes in the Shopify store. We are going to look at the head tag and then paste the Google Tag Manager head snippet. Let's go back to Google Tag Manager to grab the body snippet. On, on the theme file, let's search for body tag. And right here, we will paste the body code. Let's hit format liquid. This step is not necessary. However, I like this because it prettifies the code at the indentation. Let's just hit save and now we have Google Tag Manager on our Shopify store. Now this only adds the Google Tag Manager on the user front end. It does not add the Google Tag Manager code on the final thank you pages. So in order to add Google Tag Manager container on the thank you pages, let's hit back to the settings, checkouts, scroll all the way down to order status scripts and additional scripts. Here we are going to paste the head snippet from Google Tag Manager to track the user on the final thank you page. If you have any kind of upsell tracking plugin such as Cpify upsell or reconvert, you also need to paste this code on the post purchase snippet. Let's hit save. And now your Google Tag Manager code is firing on all the pages of the website. So in order to verify if the tracking is working fine, you can head over to the website and click on the Google Tag Assistant Chrome extension. It will show you that a Google Tag Manager container has been found on this website. And now we can start adding Google Analytics 4 property on the Google Tag Manager container. Now on your analytics account, what we are looking for is the GA4 measurement ID. Click on the admin setting on the bottom left corner of your Google Analytics account and then head head over to property settings section. Then head over to property column and you are going to find data streams. Depending on how many data streams you have and which data stream you are going to use for the tracking. We only have one data stream that is web. Let's click on this data stream to copy the measurement ID. This is the measurement ID that we are going to use for tracking. Let's copy this ID and head back to the Google Tag Manager container. In the Google Tag Manager container, let's go back to workspaces. Workspace is where we are going to make all the changes for the tracking. Let's head down to the variable section and create a variable for our Google Analytics 4 measurement ID. This is going to be a constant variable. So let's just paste the value and rename it to GA4 measurement ID. Let's hit save. Now we have created a user defined constant variable. The only reason for creating this variable is so that we don't have to copy and paste this value again and again, and we can refer to this variable once. Let's go back to the tags. 
click on new and we want this tag to fire on all the pages of the website so we are going to select all pages you might notice that previously we used to have a google analytics for configuration tag however google has replaced the configuration tag with a similar system that we used to have in universal analytics which is the older version of google analytics from now on we are going to have this thing called google tags and g tags are where we are going to do all of our configuration and then we are going to create events based on those tags we are going to select one of the tags created by google you can select directly from google tag or you can go to google analytics and then create a google tag for yourself it requires a tag id uh, you can use the same measurement id that we have created in the user defined variable click on the plus section and select the variable that you have and this is all the settings that you need we are going to rename this to GA4. Previously, we used to name this tag as GA4 configuration tag. However, now this tag is called GTAG. So we are going to add a new prefix GT GA4 GTAG configuration tag. Let's hit save and let's preview if everything is working all right for us or not. Let's hit the preview button and let's get the URL of the website and hit connect. What this is going to do is connect a debug view temp to the Shopify store temporarily. So we can see all the events that are being firing on the store. So right now the debug view has been connected with the Shopify store. And on the tag assistant window, we can see that the global site tag for GA4 is firing. If we go back to the website, we can see that the global site tag has fired on the container loaded event. And we additionally have a new container, which is GA4. It has sent a page view request back to the GA4. In order to verify if the GA4 has received the request, you can go back to the Google Analytics 4, click on debug view, and then see if there are any events that has been received. We have received two events, which are session start and page view event. Uh, the reason we are looking at these events in the debug view is because GA4 has been connected with Google Tag Manager right now and this event is coming through a debug assistant window. However, you can verify the same event from the home page where you might have a real time event and you can see one user has been registered on the website. We can navigate to a few different pages to see if GA4 is tracking all the pages on the website. Let's go back to the Google Analytics and we should receive three different page view events based on the three events we have done on the website. We have received the three page views that we have visited that are page view, product pages, and the main home page. Right now, configuring one tag for the configuration will automatically track the basic events such as page view, scroll, user engagement, session start, first visit, etc. If you want to block these events, you can go to Google Analytics account, click on admin section, go to the data stream that you have created, click on the data stream, and under the enhanced measurement, you can turn it off if you want to disconnect all of these events and you want to set this event manually by yourself. However, it is recommended to have these events enabled. Uh, one last change you need to make sure is that you have published your Google Tag Manager container. So let's just publish this container. Integration tag edit. Let's hit publish. If you do not publish the Google Tag Manager container, then all the changes you have made stays in a draft mode and they will only be visible when you are connected to your website through the debug view. They are not live on the production website. That means any user who visited your website will not be tracked if the Google Tag Manager container is not published. So right now we have published the Google Tag Manager container and we can see all the events coming in that are page view, session start, user engagement, scroll. Right now we have connected Google Analytics 4 property using Google Tag Manager on the Shopify store and we are only tracking the page view events and all the basic events that are configured by Google Analytics 4 by default. We are not tracking any kind of enhanced e-commerce event however if you want to see more in-depth video on how to track view item add to cart purchase etc you can click on this playlist or head over to my youtube channel and click on the next video to watch the e-commerce event tracking using ga4